Hi, I'm Henry Palmer, and today I will be talking to you about how we can combat America's growing opioid epidemic with technology. Introduction. Opioids, originally intended to relieve chronic pain, have done quite the opposite in recent years. Doctors and pharmacists are doling out pill cocktails like candy, and although opioids can be effective when taken at the prescribed rate, they can be deadly if abused. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, more than 115 Americans die from opioid overdose every day. In addition to hurting our population, this epidemic is also devastating our economy. U.S. Council of Economic Advisors estimated that, quote, in 2015 alone, the economic cost of the opioid crisis was $504 billion, or 2.8% of the GDP that year. As you can see in this pie chart on the left, according to Rachel Lapari, quote, prescription drug misuse is second only to marijuana as the nation's most commonly used illicit drug. And if that doesn't scare you enough, this graph by CBS shows that in 2016, heroin deaths, which are a common result of opioid addiction, surpassed gun homicide deaths in the U.S. Cause and impact. This epidemic stems from a combination of negligent pharmaceutical and healthcare companies, misinformed doctors, and a plethora of prescriptions. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, quote, in the late 1990s, pharmaceutical companies reassured the medical community that patients would not become addicted to prescription opioid pain relievers, and healthcare providers began to prescribe them at greater rates. This subsequently led to the widespread diversion and misuse of these medications before it became clear that they could be indeed highly addictive. In addition, as said by Christopher Cadwell, an American journalist who graduated from Harvard, Quote, a whole generation of doctors was schooled in the new understanding of pain. Patients threatened malpractice suits against doctors who did not prescribe pain medications liberally and gave them bad marks on patient satisfaction surveys, which ultimately determined their financial compensation. As you can see in this graph on the left, prescriptions skyrocketed from 76 million in 1991 to 219 million in 2011. With more supply came more demand for these euphoria-filling opioids. This graph on the right shows that as prescriptions increased, it led to a surge in opioid-related deaths in the U.S. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, in 2016 alone, 11.5 million people misused prescription opioids, and 42,429 people died from opioid overdose in the U.S. That's five times the amount in 1999. As illustrated by the horrors of this crisis, current solutions have not been effective for the epidemic. However, as said in the stimulus package, today's era of technology and the approaching era of ubiquitous computing can be utilized to combat the epidemic. My first solution is using wearable devices as an alternative to opioids in, in treating chronic pain through stimulating the body's natural opioids. One example of this is Quell. According to an Engadget interview with Shai N. Gonzani, the CEO and founder of Quell, quote, the electrical stimulation activates your body's endogenous opioids. You know, we actually have these opioids in our nervous system that naturally block pain. The electrical stimulation over the long term induces your body to produce these endogenous pain modulators, which creates pain relief in a very safe and non-addictive way. That is the concept that is central to the Quell program, safe and non-addictive. In addition, according to Tom Shea, a former Percocet addict who suffers from chronic pain as a result of a car accident in his mid-20s, quote, when it really hits me, the arthritis can literally knock me out for the entire day. When I put on the Quell for the first time, Within a couple of hours, that throbbing, nasty feeling had gone away. I wear it every day, 24-7, and don't use Percocets anymore. I haven't taken them for two years. As you can see here, Quell is a device that wraps around the arm or leg and sends small electrical shocks into the body to stimulate the natural opioid. And as you can see on this picture on the right, the user of Quell can use their smartphone, another result of today's era of technology, to control the intensity and frequency of the treatment. Limitations and implications of this solution. The main limitation of this solution is cost. According to the Quell website, one Quell band costs $250, a price that may scare away addicts who'd rather spend their cash on more opioids. In addition, some addicts may be scared away due to the ineffectivity of the band compared to opioids. Implications. The implications of this solution are that it would provide safe and non-addictive pain relief, there's no risk of overdose, and ultimately it would lead to less opioid-related deaths in the U.S. My second solution is using wearable technology devices to monitor and detect opioid use. In addition to treating chronic pain, wearable devices can be used to detect and monitor opioid use. 
quote, wearable biosensors have the potential to improve detection of relapse by providing objective, real-time physiologic data on opioid use that can be used by treating clinicians to augment behavioral interventions, according to Stephanie Carrera. Although biosensors sound great in theory, is there really proof that they work? Well, according to a study on wearable biosensors by the Journal of Medical Toxology, wearable, bi di wearable biosensors were able to detect changes in movement and skin temperature in response to opioid use. Limitations and implications. There are several limitations for this, for this so solution, including the fact that biosensors cannot treat chronic pain. They can only detect and monitor opioid use. In addition, they're expensive and they can easily be taken off by the user. However, the primary concern with this solution is the possible privacy infringement. Quote, for many people, ourselves included, the world we have just described has the potential to be frightening. Even more concerning, ubiquitous computing has tremendous privacy implications, according to Michael Dubon from the, stimul from the stimulus package. Implications. The implications of this solution are that it would help addicts control their cravings. It would prevent addicts uh, from, from, it would keep addicts, it would make addicts more likely to stick to their prescriptions, which would thus prevent overdose. And overall, it would lead to less opioid-related deaths in the U.S. In conclusion, today's opioid epidemic is a major problem that needs to be addressed, addressed immediately. Today's era of technology and the approaching era of ubiquitous computing can be utilized to solve the problem. Thank you. Terrific, Henry. I've got a couple of questions for you. Okay, uh, how would you judge the validity of the sources that you used? Do you think they are valid, va very valid? And if so, why do you know that they are? Um, I think like almost all of my evidence is very valid because I found a lot of government organizations, organizations, especially like the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the National Institute on Drug Abuse, just uh, very uh, prestigious and high-level Organiza government organizations that have wrote about this issue. But then, uh, in terms of perspective, I also used um, a really good Time magazine that Miss Mazier gave me that had just a bunch of interviews with former addicts and family members. So I think that kind of helped me tie in the uh, pers perspectives. Um, and it also came from a credible uh, news source in Time. So overall, I think very valid. Much more sure. Now that you're all done looking back on your project, what would you have as advice for researchers that were gonna follow in your footsteps? What would you tell them? Um, I would say uh, definitely start, um, I would say definitely start looking for perspectives first because there's obviously a lot of research done on this topic because it's so prevalent in the news today. So I would say finding perspectives is the most important part because a lot of people like, in general, people aren't going to be super open to like talking about their drug addiction or how they've lost a family member to drug abuse. So uh, I would say definitely start looking, start by looking for more perspectives on the uh, epidemic. Fantastic. Thank you.